very sad day for the wrestling world. Wrestling fans, wrestlers all over the world mourn the loss of Pedro Morales at the age of 76. The first ever WWF Triple Crown winner, and I'll go into a little bit uh, here in a bit, passed away. And just simply start out with a toast. Pedro, you meant so much to wrestling. You meant so much to the Puerto Rican fans, so much to wrestling fans in general. You crossed boundaries, you crossed so many platforms and did so well in so many damn companies. Pedro, rest in peace. You more than earned it, sir. You more than earned it. I admit right now, um, as a longtime wrestling fan, that I only caught very, very little Pedro Morales' career before he retired. Um, because he <clears throat> start, he was born in 1942 and, and debuted in 1959 at the age of 17. And was world-renowned well before he, um, you know, had a big run in the WWWF for Vince Sr. Uh, from 1970 to 1975. He <clears throat> was popular everywhere he went because he was talented. He was really, really good. Now, yes, if you see his stuff later in the 80s, he still moved really, really well. But he'd been wrestling for that point for 20 plus years. That's going to take its toll on anybody. But let's hit some highlights of his career. And I encourage you guys, if, if you guys get a chance, check out his matches. What matches are on the WWE Network. And hopefully they add even more and add a collection or whatever and have a good tribute to him, <clears throat> um, you know, lined up for their network. Because he more than deserves it. Because if you look back on his career, what he meant to wrestlers in general and just babyface and how great of a babyface he was and how great of a performer he was. Even seeing him later in his career, you could tell he was just so goddamn good. <clears throat> um, he did retire in 87 at the age of 45, but during that 28 year, year career, he won championships in, basically everywhere he went. He was in the American Wrestling Association in the mid 70s when, when that territory was still hot. In San Francisco, in San Francisco for Roy Shire, that was a really, really hot territory. <clears throat> um, Ray Stevens has talked about, you know, talked about, um, you know, in, I mean, I'm sure in interviews, but also to other people. And those stories have been passed on that he made a whole lot of money in San Francisco. Um, you, you heard stories from Pat Harrison about how great, you know, the San Francisco territory did. And how great the Cow Palace drew and how the Cow Palace even still stand. If those walls could talk, the things that they could tell. Um, <clears throat> but he won championship, you know. Pedro Morales won championships in San Francisco, in Hawaii, when Hawaii was really, really hot. In uh, Florida, in Florida, Eddie Graham knew how to get the best out of a lot of talents, no matter their skill set, but especially fiery baby faces, and if they were ethnic baby faces, and could draw a big crowd. And you have to imagine, in Florida, a Puerto Rican fan base had to have been very heavy there. But then when he got to the WWF, and he had a few stints there among the times that he was wrestling in Puerto Rico and other places and stuff like that. And obviously he was popular in Puerto Rico, World Wrestling Council and stuff like that. <clears throat> but um, he did so goddamn well and so goddamn much and drew such big numbers. He was basically as popular as Bruno at some points. And when he lost matches, fans would, fans would have riots. If you hear story, you could hear stories about that. The fans would riot if he would lose. That's how passionate they were about Bruno and about Pedro and about <clears throat> those great baby faces that they had. Um, he was the wrestler of the year in for the uh, Pro Wrestling Illustrated in 1972, which makes sense given how he was in the midst of his, uh, you know, his long running WWF title run. I believe that lasted about. It didn't last quite three years, but it lasted close. <clears throat> it lasted. Like, you know, it lasted a couple months under three years. But in just WWE alone, I mean, you can, recant, you can look up the stuff anywhere and find out about his title reigns and stuff like that. But let's just take a look at um, some of his, you know, some of his title wins. So he's a two-time Intercontinental Champion. He beat Ken Patera in 1980, and then he won the title again uh, about, about a year later, something like that. He didn't hold the first, he didn't have a long first run with the title, but... Um, his second run was like 14 months and he eventually dropped it to Don Morocco in the beginning of 1983. <clears throat> and that was, that was pretty much Pedro's last big, big run. I mean, he would still do some stuff after that, but having a 14 months run 
it was basically, you know, showing, hey, even into his 40s, you know, <clears throat> he could do really, really well. I mean, retiring at the age of 45, like, by that point, he was just about, like, 40, 41, and doing exceptionally well still. He transitioned into, like, when WWE really got hot and everything, and when Vince started his national expansion. Sure, he wasn't around much for the WrestleMania time and stuff like that. He was a big reason why um, the New York promotion, <laughs> the New York area, was seen as so goddamn hot. Um, he was tag team champions with Backlund, and this is during Backlund's, um, you know, they won the titles from, I believe, Offa and, I can't remember, it was Offa, it might have been Offa and Sika, but he wasn't, Backlund was the WWF champion at the time, and they couldn't, you know, a heavyweight champion could not also hold another title in that same promotion, so they had to give up those titles, but they still held him for a day, so that counts, so at this point, <coughs> he's, Ben, he's been a multi-time champion, and, you know, at, he hadn't won the Intercontinental title yet. But then you look, he was a U.S. champion. And yes, WWF did have a U.S. Uh, championship. He won it in January 71. And then he was the guy that <coughs> unseated Ivan Koloff, who had just beaten Bruno San Martino for the championship like nine, ten days before or something. Or actually... Ivan might have held it for a couple of weeks or something like that, but they had to get the title off of him because the crowd was... If you watch that match with Ivan Koloff and, you know, Ivan Koloff and Bruno San Martino, once again, toast to them, RIP, um, you know, they live long lives as well. You have to think that <clears throat> Vince McMahon Sr. was like, okay, we have to get the title off of him. And who better to take it than Bruno, uh, than, you know, Bruno, like the guy right under Bruno as far as babyface, Pedro Morales. And Pedro, Pedro Morales ha held it for one like one thousand twenty seven days, I believe. So he held it for just over a thousand days. He's one of the few that held it for over a thousand days. There's, I don't think there's anybody else that's going to hold a WWF championship for that long. I mean, that that's going to actually mean something at least. And I know that sounds kind of mean, but <laughs> it meant a lot. Long title reigns did mean a whole lot in the territory days, but Pedro made it matter. Every single time they had a New York show or wherever they went, he was super popular. Um, he, he, you know, holding it for that long was amazing. And then he would, uh, sub, he would subsequently, you know, he had to drop the U.S. title and everything or had to relinquish that. Um, and then he would win the tag titles and then he would become a two-time Intercontinental Champion. So you got to think about it. Pedro was way ahead of his time. They had a whole lot to invest in Pedro, and he gave it back to them in box office and with his passion and his fire and his great ability in the ring. He was also inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 1995, well fitting, and it was great that he got inducted while <coughs> he was, you know, still alive. I mean, granted, that was 24 years ago, but still, it was great and such an honor and everything for a guy that gave so much to wrestling in general, the promotions I, that I mentioned earlier, and so many others. Um, you faced Bruno at a uh, showdown at Shea Stadium. It was a 75-minute draw, I believe. That is a match that um, <clears throat> that will stand the test of time because it's two big baby faces, and who would be the better one? And it turns out the crowd, you know, from, you know, clippings and stuff like that and, and, you know, articles written about and everything in interviews that Pedro was pretty goddamn over against Bruno, and that's saying something because Bruno was really, really over at that point. Um... And <laughs> Pedro's title reign, his long-running title reign at the time, because he faced Pedro while ch he, fa he faced Bruno rather while champion Pedro did, and he would drop it to Sean Stasiak, um, and then Stasiak would uh, lose it back to Bruno and everything. But Pedro, from there, just his career, his legend grew and grew and grew, and it just is amazing knowing the impact he had, not just on Puerto Rican fans, but just on so many fans. Longtime fans like myself or <laughs> ones that are even older, some of them may have been able to see Pedro. If you if you were able to see Pedro Morales live, if you were ever able to talk to him or anything, please share your experiences on video, share them on social media, share them in the comments, and I will make I will make sure to promote that. As wrestling fans, let's try to do let's try to do the same thing we did for Mean Gene, Mean Gene who passed away tragically earlier this year. Let's keep the memory of these wrestling legends alive. Honestly, like, you know, once again, to all that have passed, but especially Mean Gene, but especially Pedro Morales, a toast to you. Good sir, you have earned it. You lived a hell of a life. Rest in peace, Pedro Morales.